Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm just checking out the Verbling chat here. Lots of people showing up today. Uh, we're going to be having a listening class, so I'm going to be reading some stories. They're uh, kind of like short news stories, actually, and so you will have a chance to listen and see what you can understand. I will read them a couple of different times, one time the slowly, and then the next time at a normal speed. And then I will ask some questions to see um, if you guys understood what I was reading. And also, you can ask questions if you need help understanding things. Hi, Nan. How are you? Come on, come on every, in, everybody. And we will uh, say hi, and people can introduce themselves. And um, then we will get started. So can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Andrea, I don't know why you can't hear me. Maybe your sound is off, um, but my microphone is on, so everybody should be able to hear me right now. Uh, Duarte, how are you doing today? Hi. Does anyone hear me? I couldn't hear anything. Oh, hi, Nihan. I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Nihan, I heard you. So if everybody looks up at their, um, above the verb link chat, you can see that there's a microphone there. If it's red, then you're muted. You can also see if you're muted just by looking at your picture right here down below. If you're muted, then it will have a, a red microphone, so you just click off of that and then you'll be able to uh, know that we can hear you. Also, if we hear you, we'll be able to see this green line underneath the little box. So that way we know that your microphone is on. So hi Iman, how are you? Hi, how are you Lisa? I'm doing well, welcome. <laughs> Are you, are, isn't it late in Spain right now? Yeah, it's been very late. It's very late, but uh, I missed classes. I have been away for a while, and today I'm just taking a lot of classes together. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just miss the classes now. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. It's Saturday. It's okay. Yeah, you can sleep in tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> okay. Great. Okay, I'm going to uh, start saying hi to everybody. Ahmed, how are you? Ahmed, are you there? I think you're. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the hi. mic was mute. Yeah. Fine. So why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Tell them your name and uh, what yeah. country My you're from. Ahmed. And uh, I'm from Syria. Okay, wonderful. And Andrea, uh, but now I'm living in Turkey. Oh, you're living in Turkey? Okay. Yes. Is it Ahmed or Ahmad? Ahmad. Ahmad. Okay, great. Yes. Okay, Andrea, how are you? Hi, Ningu. Good. Where Where do you live? I'm from Brazil. Okay, what part of Brazil do you live in? Soltes of Brazil. Okay. Oh, Duarte, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm fine. So we have uh, Hi, everybody. My name is Duarte. I'm from Brazil. I'm 57 years, years old. And uh, uh, I'm from Contagem, Minas Gerais. Oh, okay. I'm here. It is now uh, 9 5. Okay, 9.05. Great. Wonderful. Well, welcome. And Thank you. Efrain? Hello. Efrain, are you there? Okay. Ahmad, you have a lot of noise in the background, so I'm going to mute your microphone right now. And Efrain, your microphone may be muted. If it is, you can unmute it so we can hear you um, speaking. 
Okay, maybe he was having trouble. And Iman, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Uh, I live in Spain. Um, well, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Your name. Sorry, Where I just at? I am living in Spain. I am uh, studying a lot. Uh, everything that I am studying is. Uh, All right. It's, it's about linguistics at the moment. Oh, cool. I'm, I'm learning how to teach Spanish. Uh -huh. I'm trying to improve my English. I am trying to to get ready for an exam for the Cambridge uh, oh. C1 certificate. Yeah. Okay. Great. In a few months. So that's me just that's, right now. That's why you're <laughs> staying up so late. <laughs> yes. 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 All right. Great. And uh, Marcia, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm from Bra Brazil too, but I'm living in UK. Oh, okay. What part of the United Kingdom are you living in? Wales. Wales, wow. What are you doing all the way over in Wales, far away from Brazil? <laughs> um, I, I, I didn't fa find out yet <laughs> how. <I'm laughs> <laughs> the, the weather is terrible. Oh, I miss the sunshine so much. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because everybody I talked to who is in Brazil said it's so hot right now. It's very yeah. nice and sunny. <laughs> and here is a minus uh, three today. Wow. Wow. It's snowy. And snowy, wow. Yeah. yeah. Terrible. <laughs> you have to wear a jacket even. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, well welcome. Uh Thank Mina, you. how are you doing today? Mina. Hey Miss Lisa, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm great. Why don't you tell everybody where you're from? Um Egyptian. Okay. Wonderful. Welcome. And Nihan, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. And you are up very late too, right? Yes, because uh, <laughs> I'm not working at weekends. Yeah, nice. Yes, uh, Saturdays and uh -huh. uh, Sundays. It's very great because I haven't uh, worked like this. I always work Saturdays, uh, mm. but uh, in my new work, uh, I haven't worked. Yeah, great. So you get to take some English classes. <laughs> yes. Cool. All right. All right. And uh, Ruthison, are you there? Rodrigo? Hello, I can hear you. Hi. Uh, Is that how you say your uh, name, Ruthison? Uh, it's Hootsong, but you can call me Hootsong. Rodrigo. Rodrigo, okay. Rodrigo, are you, are you from Brazil Rodrigo, too? Rodrigo, yes. Yes, I am. Really wow, amazing. we have so lots cold. of Brazilians here today. <laughs> oh, I can see I have a lot of friends. Yes, great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wonderful. And Imad came in. Hi, Imad. So, I live in Sao Paulo. <laughs> oh, in Sao Paulo. Okay, it's a big city. The big city of Sao Paulo. Imad, yeah, are you there? Yes, but, but it's so hot here. <laughs> I, I know. That's what I keep hearing. Yeah, Lisa. Okay. Yeah, Lisa. Okay, here. great. Just wanted to check in, say hi. Hi, hi Lisa. Okay. I'm Imad Yeah. Uh-huh. Great. And I think we had some, had some movement. So, um, Haluk, you came in? Haluk? I think maybe you need to turn on your microphone it might be muted if there's a red microphone there on your uh, picture just go down below and click on the mic and that'll turn your microphone on so I can hear you okay okay alright so today we're going to be doing a listening class so in the listening classes I'm the one doing the reading and you guys are just listening and trying to um, understand what I'm reading and then you get to think about it and then I will ask some questions and then we'll see if you understood and we will talk about anything that you don't understand so if you need help with the vocabulary or something then um, I'm happy to help you out there 
Um, let's see, did somebody else come in? Lisette, hi there, Lisette. Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Okay. So we're just barely getting started here. It takes a little while to get uh, everybody organized. And um, so I'm going to be reading. I'm going to be reading something that I'm going to be looking at. I'm not going to be posting it in the screen share because I want you to just be using your ears, not your eyes. So you can even just relax and close your eyes if you want so that you can uh, not have any distractions and just listen to what I read. I'm going to read um, the first time I will read the story. It's a news story. I'm going to read it very slowly and then I will read it again a second time but at normal speed. Okay? Um, let's see. I'm going to try to see what's going on in the Verbling chat. Let's see. Uh, Christina, um, I'm not sure what's going on for you, but the way the ver I, let me just explain how the Verbling classes work because we have a lot of people watching this right now. And so um, if you're watching, I want you to know that the class is, is full right now, but as you have seen, some people come and go. It depends on um, their connection. Sometimes they lose their connection, and sometimes they have to leave, and that's okay. Um, if a person drops out of the Hangout, then the green uh, Join Class button will be available again, and then if you click on it, then you will be brought into the Google Hangouts. Usually when you come in right now, like if you come in right now, your microphone will be muted, and you can see that because it will be red. A little picture of a microphone is red. You just click it. It also tells you, I think, at the top, it will say that your microphone is muted. And, um, yeah, and if you want to come in later, if, if other people need to leave, then you just, that's the only way you can get in. Otherwise, it's full, and we can't have anybody else in the Google Hangouts, but you can watch. And because this is a listening class, then all you need to do is listen to me read, and then you'll be able to see whether or not you can understand what I'm saying. And you can also answer the questions in the Verbling chat if you would like uh, to participate. Okay? Uh, I'm going to get started now. I'm going to uh, put up the mod's eagle while I'm reading. <laughs> and I will read the first one. Like I said, I'm going to read it slowly first. And the first one I'm going to read is called... Woman Paints Animals on Trees. So that's the first, that's the title of the first uh, little story, news story that I'm going to read. In one of northern China's most notoriously polluted cities, a young student's been painting on trees, turning them into colorful works of art. Wang Yu says she was inspired went out on a walk with her mother and found trees with knots she considered unattractive and began to paint onto them. The 23-year-old's creations range from pandas to white cats, many of which can be seen along the 15 tree trunks lining the city's Zhuzhong Street. On average, it takes around four hours for Wang to finish an entire painting. She says the main motivation for her paintings was to raise residents' environmental awareness. I just hope that people will protect and treasure nature after seeing my paintings, which are all natural creations. In addition, I hope people will be happier and not be depressed by the smoggy weather. Local environmental authorities say Wang's watercolor paintings don't harm the trees. Okay, I'm going to read it again, and this time see if you guys can uh, listen out and tell me afterwards what the word uh, notoriously means, what a knot in the tree is, uh, the word range and raise. Maybe you can listen up for those. Okay, the woman paints animals on trees. In one of northern China's most notoriously polluted cities, a young student's been painting on trees, turning them into colorful works of art. Wang Yu says she was inspired when out on a walk with her mother and found trees with knots she considered unattractive and began to paint onto them. 
The 23-year-old's creations range from pandas to white cats, many of which can be seen along the 15 tree trunks lining the city's Zhuzhong Street. On average, it takes around four hours for Wang to finish an entire painting. She says the main motivation for her paintings was to raise residents' environmental awareness. I just hope that people will protect and treasure nature after seeing my paintings, which are all natural creations. In addition, I hope people will be happier and not be depressed by the smoggy weather. Local environmental authorities say Wang's watercolor paintings don't harm the trees. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, who can tell me what the story was about? Who wants to tell me in their own words? I can It's be. about... Okay. Good. Okay, Imad, why don't you tell me just a couple of things about it, not the whole thing, and then other people can ha say some other things. Yeah. Okay. So this is girl, or maybe a teenage. Uh, she invented a new uh, way to uh, to change the, the way that the, the her city, that is very polluted city, or have suffered from pollution, uh, by painting uh, an animals in white colors uh, on the on the trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, should I complete also? Right. I complete? Uh, no, we can ask some, somebody else. Anybody else have yeah. some other things they could say about what they heard? She yeah, will be... Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. I understand that in China, mm -hmm. uh, some uh, boys, some teenagers perhaps, they painted some pictures on trees, and the, the intent of these uh, painters is that they uh, want to call the attention of the people to preserve the trees and the nature. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Um, does do people agree that it was about some? Teenagers painting on trees? No, only one young girl. Yes. Girl. Okay. Does anybody remember um, how old? Twenty three. Yeah. Twenty three. Uh huh. Twenty three years old. So it's about a lady, a girl who's twenty three years old, and she uh, was painting on the trees. Why was she painting on the trees? What did she consider to be unattractive? Unattractive means um, not good looking or ugly. You guys remember the word? Smuggy. Uh, nope, that word was in there. But here I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna copy the first paragraph and put it in the chat so you guys can read it, and then you'll be able to see. In one of northern China's most notoriously polluted cities, so yes, you're right, it was uh, in a city that's very polluted, a young student um, has been painting the trees, turning them into colorful works of art. Wang Yu says she was inspired when out on a walk with her mother and found trees with knots. You guys know what knots are? Tree knots? It's a kind of branch... Uh Cutting the branch uh, through the uh, tree. Uh huh. Let me uh, show you a picture in the screen share. Then you'll all know, mm -hmm. and you've seen this before. So uh, knots in the tree look like that. That's called a knot in the tree. Sometimes it can look like that also. And this is called the trunk of the tree. So on the trunk, she saw some things and she did some paintings. This is not the painting that she did, but this is another uh, tree trunk that has a painting on it, for example. So she thought the knots were unattractive. That means they didn't look nice. So she started painting. What types of things did she paint on the trees? Who can either read animals. it in the chat? Animals. What? Animals? animals. Uh-huh. What types of animals? Panda. 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 Wildcats. And cats, uh huh. Yep. So in the in the reading it says they range from 
pandas to white cats. So to range from means it goes from one, like one of those to the other. So there's a wide range, a wide variety of different animals that she was painting. And how many tree trunks were there on this city street? It says right there in the, in the thing. Anybody remember? Fifteen. Fifteen. Yep. Yeah. And so basically, why did she want to paint these trees? What did she hope that people will learn or think about when they see these trees painted? Go ahead, um, Andrea. She hope the people uh, protect the nature. Uh huh. Yeah. So she wanted to. We call it um, environmental awareness. So when she wants people to have more environmental awareness, that means she wants them to think about nature. And there was another thing that she wanted too. Does everybody remember that? Another reason why she uh, wanted um, to paint the trees. The people don't feel depressed. Yeah. You guys remember that? I'll, I'll copy that last part um, here. It says, I just hope that people will protect and treasure nature after seeing my paintings. So she wants them to treasure it, to appreciate it, and to protect it. And in addition, I hope people will be happier and not be depressed by the smoggy weather. Okay, so she lives in a very polluted uh, city, so sometimes people get depressed because it's ugly or doesn't, doesn't look nice or it's very um, um, polluted. Okay, does anybody have any questions or any words? There was one word, uh, the word notoriously. You guys know what that means? Notoriously? Polluted. Yeah, notoriously polluted. So if something is notorious, that means it's famous for something. So, um, and it doesn't necessarily mean in a good way. Like you could say, so like no New York is notorious for having a lot of crime. So it's like famous for having a lot of uh, crime. So it's famous for something that's not necessarily great. <laughs> so that's how you use that word, notorious. Okay, the same kind of nobility. No, say it again. Uh, it's the same of nobility. No, notoriety? That word? Nobility. Noisy? That word? Write the word that you want. The same as noisy. No, yeah. No. The word is known. Yeah, it's known for. Exactly. Ah, yeah. So yeah. it's, uh, yes, notorious for or known for. Yep. Can That's I right. ask something? Okay. Yes. Nihan? Uh, is it about the bad things, notorious, or uh, it's all about bad and good things? Notorious is usually bad things. Bad things, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, but it it does mean known for. But if you say it's notorious for, um, like you would say, you could hear like on a news report, notorious for heavy traffic, notorious for lots of crime, notorious for um, pollution, things like that. Okay. You you, Thank it, you you yeah you wouldn't necessarily hear it like it's notorious for beautiful flowers or something like that. You would say it's famous for or known for, okay. but the word notorious has a little bit of a negative uh, okay. meaning. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions before we go to the next reading? No? No. Okay. Great. All right. This one is called Astronauts Are Back from Space. So I'm going to uh, put that title in the chat so everybody knows what it's talking about. Astronauts Are Back from space, Th um, three international space station crew have returned to Earth safely. The Russian Soyuz capsule carrying them 
landed in Kazakhstan a day later than planned due to poor weather conditions. The Russo-American trio Kevin Ford, Oleg Novitsky, and Evgeny Tarelkin, <laughs> those are Russian names, had spent 144 days aboard the space station and clocked up about 61 million miles in space. The crew's descent took just under four hours. NASA reported that the deorbit burn had gone flawlessly, with the capsule landing upright, almost hitting the bullseye landing spot through thick fog. The crew are said to be doing well and will be transported to a post-flight rehabilitation center. Okay, I'm going to read it again. Astronauts are back from space. Three International Space Station crew have returned to Earth safely. The Russian Soyuz capsule carrying them landed in Kazakhstan a day later than planned due to poor weather conditions. The Russo-American trio, Kevin Ford, Oleg Novitsky, and Evni Tarlkin, had spent 144 days aboard the space station and clocked up about 61 million miles in space. The crew's descent took just about under four hours. NASA reported that the deorbit burn had gone flawlessly, with the capsule landing upright, almost hitting the bullseye landing spot through thick fog. The crew are said to be doing well and will be transported to a post-flight rehabilitation center. Okay, so how many people were in the crew that came back? Three people. Three. Yes. <laughs> Three people. And what are these people called, these people who travel in space? <laughs> <laughs> huh. Astronauts. Astronauts. Kevin. Kevin. They're called astronauts, as we call them in English. And where were they, um, where were, had they been for 144 days? Space. Space station? Yeah, right. Space station. So they had been in a, um, an international space station. And from what two countries um, were the people from? Russia. Mm -hmm. And America. America. Yeah. So that's what it said. Russo. Russo-American, so that's how you say that, Russian-American team or crew. Crew is another word for a uh, team. And when, um, let's see, why did they have to come back a day late? Weather condition. Yes, they had poor weather conditions. Maybe it was snow or fog or something like that. And how many millions of miles did they uh, go in space? Do you guys remember that number? 601 million. No. Uh, 61 million. 61 million miles. Right, 61 million miles. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I can't even imagine. And how long did it take them to land? So the word um, that they used? was descent. That means going down. So they were landing. Does anybody remember how long that took them? Four days. Four hours. Mm -hmm. four days. It took them four hours. And what does it mean that they landed upright? What does upright mean? They descended from top to bottom uh, vertically. Right, yeah. So they landed upright so it's, they just landed like that and they landed in the bullseye what is the bullseye you guys know what the bullseye is I think my verbling chat just start, stopped working so I was typing things but they're not showing up <laughs> bullseye do you guys know what bullseye is I'll show you bullseye so when you have a target uh, bullseye it's the middle of your target so Right there where those arrows are, that's the bullseye. So when, oops, sorry, I'm not showing you. <laughs> Let me give you a screen share there. So right there in the middle, that's the bullseye. And so when they're coming in from space, they have a spot 
with a bullseye where they really want to land. And it, it happened that these guys landed right in that space, so they had a successful uh, landing. Okay, do you guys know what a capsule is? What's, what are, are they talking about when they say capsule? The top of the rocket or mm -hmm. the spaceship? Yeah, that's what we call the little part that they um, come back in. That's called the capsule. Looks something like this. You can see it going through uh, through the air. I'm going to show it on the screen there. So that's a capsule. All right, good. Um, let's see. You guys understood that one pretty well, I think. Let me see if there was, I think there was another word in there I wanted to make sure you guys understood. Uh, flawlessly. Said they, they landed uh, flawlessly. What's another word for that? Flawlessly. I can't write it in the chat anymore because it's not working. I don't know why. Ooh, the sun's coming up. <laughs> flawlessly. It means um, smoothly. Say it, Eman. Smoothly. Smoothly. Very, very smooth. Perfectly. Safely. Perfectly. Yeah. Safely. Yes. Okay. Flawless. Without yeah, without without a problem. Um, that's how they landed. I'm trying to get in the sun here. All right, out of the sun. Okay. Good. So, does anybody have any questions on this little news story? Anything you want to make sure about? Lisa, where are you that you are you are you have sun now? <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm in Washington State. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> and it's it's about five thirty right now. And yes, okay. it's it's quite sunny. You can see out the window there. It's just coming wow. in. And so <laughs> It's not very hot, but it is sunny today. But when you're sitting in the sun, it, it warms up pretty good. So it's okay. blinding, blinding me right now. <laughs> okay, so does anybody have any questions about that one? I guess it hasn't yes, been teacher. sunny in Spain, Iman, has it? Sorry? Has it been sunny in Spain? No, no, no. Where, where, where I am now in in Malaga is very, very strange. It's raining one day. Mm. Every every two days it's raining. Wow. Yeah. It's yeah. really, really strange. One day rains, one day doesn't rain. Next day rains again. Yeah, it was kind of weird here too. On Friday, um, it was actually snowing, and it hasn't snowed at all during the winter, which it usually does a little bit. Um, but it was started snowing, and then a couple hours later, it was totally sunny and warm. So, it's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> very weird the time and the weather lately. Yeah. Yes, yes. Everywhere. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to read another one. This one is called World <laughs> Went Green for One Day. It might be interesting for you, Iman, because um, it's about Ireland, and it's uh. not showing up in the chat. I'll put it in the Google chat. So if you guys who are in the class want to look in the Google chat, I just put up the, the just the title there. So I'm going to find a picture of Ireland so we can wa look at it while we while I'm reading. There you go. There's a picture of Ireland. <laughs> a little castle. Where were you in Ireland, Iman? I lived uh, for a while. Ah. <laughs> I know that castle. Oh uh, yeah. I know that this is in the area of Connemara. Uh, that's County Galway, I think. County Clare. Mm. Mm -hmm. Or no, no, it's County Galway. I don't, I don't know. remember. <laughs> One of those. Uh, yeah, I was living in County Galway, and I was living as well in County Wicklow. Uh huh. Yeah, but I know very well this castle. Great. Yeah, it's it's a school now. This oh. is a school now. Yes. Like a private school or something? A private school, yeah, mm -hmm. for children. Yeah. They have they they allow visitors as well. Oh. During summertime, they charge a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Of, yeah. I bet. They are very very expensive the tickets to go yeah. and walk around. Wow. Okay, uh, Fernando, did you like that? You took a picture of it. <laughs> like a nice place. Okay, I'm gonna read. World went green for one day. Hmm, let's see if I can do this without. Hold on, I gotta. 
do 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 Okay. Okay. Ireland has put aside its economic travails to celebrate the day of its national saint, St. Patrick. This year, the celebrations are also global. Seventy monuments, like the pyramids in Rio's Christ the Redeemer statue, have been lit up green. Back home, the streets of Dublin were a sea of green as young and old turn, turned out to mark the occasion. It's been a five-day affair with 8,000 visitors from around the world joining in a people's parade. Prime Minister Enda Kenny has taken 19 of his ministers on a goodwill trip to sell the Irish brand abroad. More than 13 million pints of Guinness will be drunk in the world across one day, and Guinness is offering a free visit to its factory for everyone called Patrick. <laughs> okay, I'll read it again. World went green for one day. Ireland has put aside its economic travails to celebrate the day of its national saint, St. Patrick. This year, the celebrations are also global. Seventy monuments, like the pyramids and Rio's Christ the Redeemer statue, have been lit up green. Back home, the streets of Dublin were a sea of green as young and old turned out to mark the occasion. It's been a five-day affair with 8,000 visitors from around the world joining in a people's parade. Prime Minister Enda Kendi had, Kenny has taken 19 of his ministers on a goodwill trip to sell the Irish brand abroad. More than 13 million pints of Guinness will be drunk in the world across one day, and Guinness is offering a free visit to its factory for everyone called Patrick. <laughs> okay, what, um, what does it mean in this sentence when it says, Ireland has put aside its economic travails to celebrate? What does it mean? Forget when temporary it's about uh, her problems, her economic problems. Yes. Forget temporary. Yes, exactly. So your travails are your problems. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to put aside the economic worries and, and problems. Okay, good. And what does it mean? Um, actually, what is the day? What is the day that they're celebrating? The name of the day that they're celebrating? It is Patrick. Patrick is day. Yes, it's called St. Patrick. St. Yep. Patrick's. Mm -hmm. St. Patrick's Day. All right, and what were they saying about these um, pyramids and the Rio's Christ the Redeemer? What's happening to those monuments? What are they doing to them? They covered them up in green, with green. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear what exactly, but they are covered. I, yes, I, I typed, since my verbling chat for some reason doesn't seem to be working, I typed it in the um, Google chat, but it says, Seventy monuments like the pyramids and Rio's Christ the Redeemer statue have been lit up green. So they put lights. Oh, they, okay. Yeah, they lit they lit mm -hmm. them up. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. What about, um, what does it mean to mark the occasion? It says, back home the streets of Dublin were a sea of green as young and old turned out to mark the occasion. What does that mean, to mark the occasion? Celebrate. Mm-hmm. Anybody else have another uh, word? Mark the occasion? To make it memorable. Um, mm -hmm. To remember. Yeah, right. So to mark memorable. something. Yeah, make it memorable. Yeah, do something where you will remember it. Okay, they're going to mark the occasion. Good. And it was a five-day affair with 8,000 visitors from around the world joining in a parade. Everybody know what a parade is? No. Okay. Music. Uh, no, not no. In a speech. Go ahead. In a speech. Oh. This is a parade. So, as you can see, it's when people walk down the street. So, when you have a parade, uh, usually there's bands and music and uh, people who are um, representing different organizations. Uh, people, this is a parade. There's sometimes there's some very famous uh, parades, like at Thanksgiving time here in the United States in New York City, 
And in uh, Los Angeles, in Pasadena, they have a famous one called the Rose Parade. So, yeah. It's kind of like in, uh, in Rio, there's uh, Carnival. And in Carnival, don't they walk down the streets usually? Yes. Yeah. So it's kind of like that. It's a parade. Okay? All right, so that's what they were doing. Lots and lots of people in the parade. And what is this about uh, drinking Guinness? Do you guys know what Guinness is? No. Black of record. Yes. Black, black beer. Well, tell us about it. <laughs> tell us, tell us about it, uh, Iman. I've never. No, I, I, just, don't, I don't drink, no. so I don't know what it is. But yes, this is it. It's a black, uh, dark beer. <laughs> yeah. It's very creamy. Uh huh. Yeah. It tastes. I don't know. It doesn't taste like any uh, any other beer. It's a bit. It's different. Mm. I just don't know how to explain it, but. Mm -hmm. So is it? Uh, it's just very. It has its own unique flavor. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And um, so it looks like this might be uh, uh, the factory. I don't know if some of these pictures might be the. Here's the Guinness Brewery in Dublin. And um, what does your name have to be for you to go there for free? Patrick. <laughs> yeah, Patrick. So if your name is Patrick, they're going to give you a free tour. <laughs> okay, good. <coughs> Anything else in that one? What is a um? So it said that the mi prime minister wanted to take his ministers on a goodwill trip to sell the Irish brand abroad. What does it mean? A good a goodwill trip. Good intention. Mhm. Mm yeah. If you have goodwill toward other people, that means that you're friendly to them and you have good intentions. And so sometimes countries, um, the politicians, they take uh, trips abroad. They go to other countries to try to um, teach people and educate people about their country and what their country, like the kinds of products they might have available and uh, the kinds of things that um, the countries might be able to do together. So. Yes, yeah, so I guess Guinness, it sounds like Guinness is a very big um, product um, from Ireland. And so maybe uh, they want to go abroad so that uh, they can sell more Guinness beer. <laughs> promotion. Yeah, promotion, exactly, promotion. So a lot of times governments do that, but it's also governments mixed with business, business people doing that. And they're going to drink 13 million pints of Guinness on that one day, people across the country. Actually, St. Patrick's Day is kind of popular here in the United States in some uh, cities like Boston, where there are large Irish populations. And also in, um, in, in New York, for example, there's large um, Irish population from a long time ago. So they usually have pretty big uh, parades and they get drunk and drink beer and that kind of stuff to celebrate uh, St. Patrick's Day. Um, Iman, were you in Ireland during uh, St. Patrick's Day? Uh, not this year, but I have been many times there yeah, celebrating. What is the yeah. celebration like? Yeah, well, people drink a lot, really. They drink from maybe six seven o'clock in the morning they start drinking <laughs> and then they go they go they go to the parade uh -huh. and then everybody is completely drunk you know at the end of the day they, they everybody can drink maybe 10 15 20 pints of guinness oh in my one day God. minimum yeah is yeah, they drink a lot and especially wow. especially that day you know this most mostly all the celebration is just going out, seeing the parade and drinking in the pub all day long. Wow! You know, but yeah. the parades, the parades usually are really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Are quite spectacular, really. Yeah. They are beautiful. They yeah. have uh, artists uh, working all all ar all around the all. Through the year, the year just making I don't know how you call them. No. Oh, like the floats. Yeah, making yeah, the, the floats. floats and making yeah. everything. Yeah, beautiful. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. The floats can take a long time. That's the the floats are the things that um, 
they put like flowers on and, and colored paper and it's like a tractor trailer and sometimes people are sitting on it and waving to you and sometimes it's um, like and it looks like some kind of maybe cartoon character or animal or something so yeah. they just they decorate it a lot yeah okay I'm gonna read uh, another one I think we have time for two more so this next one is called football player hit a referee so uh, in the United States we actually say soccer but in the rest of the world people use the word football so it's not talking about American football it's talking about soccer which is football for everybody else in the world <laughs> okay so the title is football player hit a referee okay who would be a referee? Bahir Awasa, for one. He's had more than enough. A Lebanese official packed it in after being attacked for issuing red and yellow cards. Usually whenever we issue a red card, we expect a reaction from the player, and it happens. That's why when I issued the red card, I tried to step back in order to prevent any reaction from the player and indeed that is what happened he ran after me and attacked me when he tried to hit me I tried to run and then the coach also attacked me and the other staff ran after me and things got out of hand and I tried to run from one place to another having no idea of the reaction when he reached for his cards during a Lebanese second division game between Al Nada and Al Salam Zagarta last weekend, the game descending into chaos that makes Sir Alex Ferguson seem mild mannered. From the reaction of the players and the staff, I expected to be harmed in a grave way. I expected it because of the way the team dealt with me and the history of this team over the past years. To be honest, I did not expect to get out alive. Bahir. Uh, that's his name, eventually needed the army to step in to save him. Armed soldiers seem only a little deterrent against angry footballers. Okay, <laughs> dangerous sport. Okay, here we go. Football player hit a referee. Who would be a referee? Bakir Awaso, for one, he's had more than enough. A Lebanese official packed it in after being attacked for issuing red and yellow cards. Usually whenever we issue a red card, we expect a reaction from the player, and it happens. That's why when I issued the red card, I tried to step back in order to prevent any reaction from the player, and indeed, that is what happened. He ran after me and attacked me. When he tried to hit me, I tried to run, and then the coach also attacked me, and the other staff ran after me, and things got out of hand, and I tried to run from one place to another having no idea of the reaction when he reached for his cards during a Lebanese second division game between Al Nada and Al Salam Skarta last weekend, the game descending into chaos that makes Sir Alex Ferguson seem mild-mannered. From the reaction of the players and the staff, I expected to be harmed in a grave way. I expected it because of the way the team dealt with me and the history of this team over the past years. To be honest, I did not expect to get out alive. Bakir eventually needed the army to step in to save him. Armed soldiers seem only a little deterrent against angry footballers. Okay, so Teacher, yeah. it's Bashir, not Bakir. Okay, sorry, Bashir. Bashir. <laughs> Bashir. Okay, Bashir. good. Thank you, Bashir. Bashir. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Thanks. Um, okay, so what happened to Bashir? <laughs> <laughs> he got bitten. <laughs> yes, and why did he? Why did they go after him? Why did they want to attack him? Because he issued a red card. Yes, and um, for people who don't know about uh, football, would you would you like to tell us what a red card means? You know. Hmm? Yeah, you know. Red card when you when you issue a, you, when uh, so, uh, uh, any player do uh -huh. something uh, 
uh, like a foul, yeah. do something wrong, yes. you, you warn them, mm -hmm. then you have to issue a yellow card, mm -hmm. then if he did it again, you issue the red card and you fire him out of the field. Yes, exactly. So that's uh, usually a pretty serious uh, thing and lots of people will be upset because especially if it's in a very important player perhaps in the, the team, um, getting a red card means that that player can no longer play in the game. Um, I don't know the rules. Mina, do you know if, if, the, uh, if the player goes out with a red card, can a substitute player come in or do they have to play with 10 no people? Okay. No way. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> so that's really important then, yeah. Okay, so um, he issued a yellow card and then a red card, and then what happened? Who, who went after him? Anybody? A coach. Everybody. The player. So yeah. The, the player. The staff of the team. The coach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they all went after him. And they attacked him. <laughs> and so... Um, Thank you. Yeah. And so he says here, from the reaction of the players and the staff, I expect it to be harmed in a grave way. What does that mean, that word grave, in a grave way? Danger. Uh huh. Danger. If something is grave, it's uh, dangerous. So he thought he was in real danger. He thought actually that he might not get out alive. So he thought he was even afraid for his life, like he might um, be killed. So um, <laughs> he, who had to step in to escort him out of the uh, place? Who was it that helped save him? Does anybody remember? Remember? The policeman. The what? The army. Yes. It says Bashir eventually needed the army to step in. What does it mean to step in? I'm I'm putting some stuff in the Google chat if some of you want to look because my verbaling chat is not working right now for some reason. But I just wrote that last bit. Bashir eventually needed the army to step in to save him. So when you step in, um, you can step in to save somebody, you can step in to help somebody, you can step in to do somebody else's job. It means you um, come into a situation and you act, you do something. So they had to save him. And another word here that you might want to learn, armed soldiers seemed only a little deterrent against angry footballers. What is a deterrent? Do you guys understand that word? If it's um, a deterrent to something? They weren't decisive. Mm, yeah, a deterrent is something that deters you, and deter means to um, stop you from doing something, right? So it comes from, the verb is deter, and it means to stop you uh, from doing something. So... <laughs> the army was a little deterrent, so it did save him, but it really wouldn't be a match if the angry footballers got worse and they really wanted to, and maybe even the fans, if the fans had uh, started to get upset as well. Okay, we have time for one more listening. You guys are doing a good job. Uh, <clears throat> the listening can be uh, a little bit so, uh, much sometimes, but there's a lot of words in here. This one's just two paragraphs long, and it's about Camels living in Canada. Do you guys know what camels are? It's an animal. Usually it lives in Egypt or in the desert, for example. Yes. Yes. Has anybody ever seen a camel? I'm in Egypt. <laughs> yes, I'm, yes, I'm in Okay, hi, uh, Zhao. How are you? Yes. <laughs> I okay, Mina, have you ever have you ever ridden on a camel, camel, Mina? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> have you ever what? Ridden on a camel. Ridden. Yeah, rode like I've, I've ridden a camel, rid, rode to ride on a camel. Ah, no, 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 I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I do like. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Mina, in Egypt, do you see camels in lots of places? No, um, maybe maybe in the desert desert area. 
Yes. Okay. Yeah, and Nihan, did you say that you have seen a camel? Yes, of course, in the zoo. In the zoo, yeah, that's where I have seen a camel. <laughs> in the zoo, <laughs> of course. I, might okay. I ride it. Oh, you rode it? Okay. When I, yes, when I was a child. What, what was it like? Was it uh, fun? Was it scary? Was it? It's, it's a little bit scary, but I, I don't remember exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, this little story is about a camel living in Canada. Okay. Everybody Camels knows. In Canada. in Canada. Yeah. So Canada is up above the United States, you know. Okay. We all know. Yes. That, yeah. All right. We all know that camels live in deserts. But that didn't used yeah. to be true. Well, it may have been, but millions of years ago, they also lived in Arctic forests. That's what Canadian scientists reckon. They found the bones of what they think was a giant camel living in northern Canada. The scientists spent years putting the bones together when they tested the fragments they found. Sorry. The scientists spent years putting the bones together. When they tested the fragments, they found the DNA match the modern camel. Only these bits of bones were three and a half million years old. The giant camel may have looked like this. It didn't have a problem with snow because it had really broad feet. That said, it probably wouldn't have snowed that much because the Arctic was a lot warmer then. Scientists reckon the giant camel disappeared during the last ice age as they looked for warmer places to live. Okay, I'm going to put up the um, this last article here so you guys can see what they're talking about. Okay, and if you want to, it's actually a video here you can watch after the class is over in a couple minutes. But this is where I got this. Um, camels lived in Canada. Can you guys see that in the chat there? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, good. All right, well, we all know that camels live in deserts, but that didn't used to be true. Well, it may have been, but millions of years ago, they also lived in Arctic forests. That's what Canadian scientists reckon. They found the bones of what they think was a giant camel living in northern Canada. The scientists spent years putting the bones together. When they tested the fragments, they found the DNA match the modern camel. Only these Teacher bits of Lisa, bones. Yes. Could, could you put for us the link of this site? Yes, I can only put it in the Google chat because my verbling chat is not working. So let me go ahead and put it there. And you can go to the Google yes, chat. Yes, thank you. Thank you. You're okay, aware. I'm going to do that. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't know. My verbling chat stopped working. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, the giant camel. So the bones were three and a half million years old. The giant camel may have looked like this. And so it's they show you in the video. Um, it didn't have a problem with snow because it had really broad feet. So that means like really large feet. They, that said, it probably wouldn't have snowed, or that said, it should be a comma there, it probably wouldn't have snowed that much because the Arctic was a lot warmer then. Scientists reckon the giant camel disappeared during the last ice age as they looked for warmer places to live. Okay, so what do we learn from this little uh, story here about camels? Where do they think they might have lived millions of years ago? Canada. Yeah. In what kind of area? What kind of environment did they call that? No. What is it? Forests. Uh huh. Arctic forests. So the Arctic is talking about the um, near kind of like. Getting closer to the North Pole, for example, the Arctic is usually very snowy and icy and stuff. But did they? What else did they say about uh, what it looked like? What kind of feet did the camel have? But I could see they didn't like it to the uh, 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 cool places. I yeah. could see that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Uh huh. Yeah. And they they are looking for. Looking for to mm -hmm. our warmer place to live. Right, right. Okay, good. You got it. 
So they're they're just putting these pieces together. That's what the scientists do. They put these bones together, and then they can test the DNA. And it looks like they actually belonged to um, the camels that we know today. So if you're interested in learning more, you can watch this uh, little video here, and it'll show you what um, they look like. I think if I play it here, it doesn't. Um, you guys can't really hear it. Is that true? Can you hear it? But millions of years ago, they also lived. Can you hear it now? That's what Canadians. Yes. Saw. Yes. They found oh. bones of what they think was a giant camel living in northern Canada. It gives yeah. us an idea of what the ecology was like at that time, and also, of course, you know, it's the first evidence we have that camels were living in this forest-type environment. The scientists spent years putting the bones together. And when they tested the fragments, they found the DNA matched a modern camel. Only these bits of bones are really a million years old. The giant camel may have looked like this. It didn't have a problem with snow because it had really broad feet. That said, it probably wouldn't have snowed that much because the Arctic was a lot warmer then. Scientists reckon the giant camel disappeared during the last ice age as they looked places okay there you go <laughs> all right you guys uh, this class is over thank you for uh, coming to class and um, maybe I'll see you again in another class I'm gonna have a couple more later tonight so if you're awake and you're interested um, come on come my thanks for coming you guys look at my face got all red from the sun <laughs> what is, why is this, why is your face is red? I envy you, thank you. <laughs> well, I was sitting in this room and the sun was coming through the window. I live in Washington State, so it's been a sunny day here today. Ah, uh, no, I could say, okay. <laughs> it's rainy today here, oh. and it's great for you. <laughs> yes, well, it, it should be coming, uh, it should be getting warmer soon in Spain, with springs coming. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks bye, a lot for coming. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, teacher. Bye-bye.